Hello friends and family. It is Thursday, October 1st. Happy October. This week I have been talking about um, the idea of the economy to some extent, but um, more so this idea that we can't really grasp um, the things which we think we have including ourselves. We don't really have this body. It's constantly changing on us, constantly mutating. Um, this all stems from this kind of core fundamental concept, which unfortunately gets you know, mixed up into a philosophy. Um, so people often attribute this idea of constant change to Buddhist philosophy or Hindu philosophy. Um, and it's not really a philosophy at all. Uh, constant change is a fundamental truth. There's no real, <laughs> there's, there's no real debating that. Um, but just because it's true doesn't mean it can't be a philosophy. And as a philosophy, it can prove somewhat dangerous because then it becomes the territory of, of debates and um, scripture and, you know, these sorts of things. Change, this fundamental property of change, is, as far as meditation is concerned, it is the actual object of your awareness. So your awareness is, it's on the breath or it's somewhere else in the body um, if you're doing Vipassana meditation or say Zazen. Um, and this is what we are looking for actually, is the change. And the change is fairly, it's, it's quite large in the breath. Um, you'll find in deep meditative states, using anapana, using um, the breath as a meditation object, that those breaths can drag out. They can become elongated, not intentionally, not actively, and not in the real world. What you'll find is that your perception of time is completely altered such that, oh, okay, if I watch the change in the breath from here to here to here to here as the breath comes in and as the breath goes out, that each increment obviously has its own subdivisions, right? And this is kind of a classic mathematics paradox this idea that oh, okay if you can if you can divide it in half and then divide that half in half and then divide that quarter in half then how far can you go and um, with the breath it seems like you can go quite far <laughs> I haven't found the bottom yet um, and so sometimes it will feel as though an individual breath is taking hours together so it's coming in and it's coming in and it's still coming in and how long is it going to come in for and everything slows down it's a sort of slow motion world but i mean you're not you're not noticing the sounds and your thoughts and things anymore at that point you're only noticing the breath and the breath feels very very slow um this oddly enough is the keystone to understanding change in the outside as far as meditation is concerned, right? So we can research change in the outside um, and we can actually start from there and work our way back. So take the middle ground. The middle ground would be the Buddhist approach, I suppose. The Buddhist approach is something like you go to... Uh, 2,500 years ago, and well, and even um, I believe the Zoroastrians still do this. Um, 
there were open uh, like charnel grounds, right? Um, these graveyards, but there are no graves. They're just bodies rotting in various stages. And so you can go there and you can witness, oh, okay, here's a recent death. Like this body is just like mine, but now it is dead. And then it begins to rot and then the skin falls off and then the animals and the bugs eat it. And then there's no uh, meat left and so it's only bones and then the bones are scattered and then the bones turn to dust and then the dust gets again scattered to the wind um happens much faster if you burn the body and just throw it in the ocean <laughs> um sorry that's disrespectful um but you can go out further right like you can you can go outward out as far as we know and as far as we know is roughly like the big bang on one side and the heat death of the universe on the other end right and on in these scales it's tempting to like, cling to a sort of nihilism um there's a sort of oh it's it, like it's all going to end anyway why even bother? And you can again shrink down <laughs> and you can say, well, the floor is just going to get dusty again anyway. Why even bother? <laughs> and the answer is because it's nicer to walk on a clean floor than it is to walk on a dirty floor. So just because it's going to get dirty again anyway doesn't mean you should just give up on the whole routine. Um, and it's a similar answer for life in her seemingly unforgiving universe uh, where it's all just going to end in heat death anyway so why worry about anything um, these scales whether you're talking about a rotting body or whether you're talking about the heat death of the universe these scales are too large right even a rotting orange is too large so you oh, okay or like take a bunch of like stop motion photography of an orange rotting over the course of a couple of weeks or something and oh now oh change yes everything is constantly changing now i see it well no not really um this is still external it's not a direct experience and so you don't know anything about it um you, know, you can look through a telescope and you can say oh yeah, black holes oh the universe is so old and it's going to last so long but at some point it will all go away uh, well, you don't know anything about that. You don't. You haven't experienced this directly, so it doesn't actually inform anything. It gives you some numbers, some incredibly large numbers, um, and in the same way, a rotting orange, like a rotting body, human body, says, oh, "Okay, yes, like, all things perish. There is there is a finality to this," but you haven't experienced that finality and it is actually somewhat difficult to do this with the breath because the breath is constantly changing so you have this breath that is constantly changing on you constantly changing on you it's going out it's coming in it's going out it's coming in and at no point do we generally make the mistake of thinking this breath is this is infinite <laughs> This is an eternal breath. This one coming in, that's the last breath. I don't need to worry about breath anymore after this. This is, I've got it solved, breath. So because the nature of change is so intrinsic to the breath, it's somewhat subtle to see with direct experience that the breath is changing in a way that you weren't expecting. Um, that you couldn't point to intellectually. And so you kind of have to see the breath in these tiny, tiny slivers um, at the moment, like eyes open, talking to a camera. I can't detect the breath in those tiny slivers. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of practice. And then you have to be in that sort of mode where you're seeing, oh, okay, tiny sliver, tiny sliver, tiny sliver. And it's the same with the body but the body is a little bit more jarring. 
So when you are actually exploring the body with your attention, you will find that there is there will be things that you kind of oh my ear yeah it's a, i know it's changing in there like there's some blood moving around and stuff but mostly it feels feels pretty real feels pretty static um there will come a point where you're staring at the ear with your attention in a tiny increment right physically and in terms of time and that thing changes on you very quickly and you realize oh okay <laughs> actually everything is changing a lot more quickly than i give it credit for um you just have to look a little more closely smaller increments of time smaller increments of space and you're able to see fairly rapid change in all things internally that is direct experience the rotten orange no matter how close you get to it you will never know what it is to be a rotten orange you will never know what it is to be a decaying corpse because you can't experience that directly you can only experience whatever is changing within you currently directly um, and those things are actually not unlike a rotting orange or a decaying corpse or a blossoming flower right <laughs> like or uh, a butterfly or something like it doesn't really matter what kind of change is happening whether it's decay or growth they're sort of two sides of the same coin um, so you're going to see them both simultaneously but this is what you are looking for in anapana meditation you are looking for the changes in the breath not in change out change those are huge gross changes right anyone can tell you about their breath coming in and out um, these are changes which you can experience directly viscerally and in knowing that those changes exist then you intuitively understand more about the outside world so you see the rotting orange and rather than thinking the thought ah yes all things decay it's more obvious it's more obvious that oh, okay all these things are decaying everything is coming and going everything is being acquired but also being lost and in the scope of that we tend to become less attached to things um it's probably not common i mean maybe there's a culture in the world that does this but where large purchases are made a new house or a new car <laughs> where the celebration of that thing is the idea of loss congratulations on your new car you're gonna lose it one day <laughs> it's going you're going to crash it or it's going to rust into a million pieces in a matter of decades um, that's not usually how those celebrations play out um, some cultures uh, have the idea of like unifying a birthday and and death right or at least celebrating death on some level but um, all of these all of these external whether they're celebrations or, or whether they're simply acknowledgments um, be they a part of science be they a part of going to a graveyard be they a part of attending a funeral um, that's really only a beginning um, as long as it is outside yourself that's a beginning that's a that's a philosophical starting point where you can say ah yes okay impermanent impermanence i get it take a note um to myself <laughs> how impermanence is real but the philosophy of impermanence it's all the same whether the philosophy of impermanence is a rotting body a decaying orange or the heat death of the universe they're no different because they're not you they they are not real to you um and so it is only with this 
one starting point that we can actually get to an intuitive and real, actual understanding of what is meant by anicca, impermanence, the, the idea that, um, that nothing really lasts. And then, hopefully, <laughs> to experience that and be okay with it, and then see, oh, okay, because this change is constantly happening, not to get depressed, not to get, oh, a new car, but it's going to rust, <laughs> then to be okay with that idea. So instead of being super attached to this new car, oh, I better not scratch it, to be aware it will get scratched, it will get rusted, it will go away or you will die, one or the other. Um, and to find contentment within that, because there's no escaping that, that's simply true. All right, this was, this was more lectury than I had planned for it to be, um, and it's getting late. <laughs> so I'll, I'll close there. Um, I hope everyone is taking good care of themselves, and I hope that you are all preparing for what is probably going to be uh, quarantine Halloween. I hope you're all also taking care of everyone else near and far, and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Goodbye.